In some of our previous work, we've already studied some polynomial functions. Uh, we've looked at their graphs that we've generated on a graphing calculator. We found their zeros using the zero tool and the uh, local minimum and maximum points. But we want to try to start to analyze them a little bit more deeply than just uh, using the ca graphing calculator as a tool, but be able to generate some expectations as to what the graph is going to look like, finding the zeros being via algebra rather than having to rely on a graphing calculator, etc. So the first thing, all polynomial functions have graphs that are smooth and continuous. So they never have any linear parts to them, so there's no straight line parts like on an absolute value graph. There's no gaps in the graph like we saw on our uh, piecewise defined functions, so something like this. They're always these kind of roller coaster style graphs. And so we can see uh, some of the um, elements that we've studied before. We've got uh, increasing and decreasing parts. So here's a decreasing branch. Here's another decreasing branch because as we move across the graph from left to right, those parts of the graph are going down versus this part of the graph where as we move from left to right, we're going up. So that's going to be an increasing branch. And we have a lot of terms that we use for kind of the local minimum and local maximum points. We can call them minimum and maximum points. We can call them critical points or extreme points. So these locations where the graph is changing directions, uh, change switching from increasing to decreasing or vice versa, um, has a lot of different names. And so we eventually want to get to a point where we can find the zeros, the places where the graph crosses through the x-axis using algebra. And then we also want to be able to just look at the equation, be able to generate some expectations as to what that graph will look like. Will it be taking off to positive infinity or negative infinity eventually? Will both sides be up, both sides be down? And for that, we have a tool called the leading coefficient test. So what we see here is terrifying. But if we unpack it a little bit, hopefully it'll make some sense. So concentrate on the x's to begin with. So we see here x to the n. Then the next term has x to the n minus 1. Then we have x to the n minus 2. And so it's just going to keep on going down until eventually we reach, say, x squared, x to the first, and then there's no x in that last term, just an integer that's being added or subtracted. So in an example here, we could say n was 5. So the highest exponent could be x to the fifth. Then the next one would be x to the 5 minus 1. If n is 5, 5 minus 1 would give us 4. Then the next term would be x to the 5 minus 2, which would be 3. So in other words, this is just a way for us to kind of have like a general uh, statement for a polynomial function where n is going to be some integer and then each next term is going to have uh, one lower integer value as the exponent on the x. And then in front of that we have the corresponding coefficient. So we have a sub n. So that would be if again n was 5 that would mean that's the coefficient in front of the x to the fifth term. And then here we have a sub n minus 1. So that would be a sub 5 minus 1. So it would be a sub 4 so that would be the coefficient in front of the x to the fourth term, and so on. The bottom line is this is just a general way to describe a polynomial function. Now for us, for this leading coefficient test, I'm going to go ahead and wipe everything out here, we're really only interested in that highest exponent term and the coefficient that's in front of it. If we just know those two things, then we can figure out the general direction that the graph is going to take off if we go far enough to the right and far enough to the left along the x-axis. So in scenario one for this leading coefficient test, we're saying that n, the highest exponent of a polynomial function, is even, and the coefficient in front of that highest exponent uh, term is positive. So we might have a function like f of x equals uh, 4x to the 6th plus, and then what we're saying is we just don't care what else is downstream. We're just concentrating on this highest exponent piece. It's even, and the coefficient in front of it is positive. And so if that's the case, then that means that our graph will eventually take off to positive infinity on both sides. And the reason is, as I plug in larger and larger positive values for x, I'm going to raise them to the sixth power, 
and then I'm going to multiply it by a positive 4. So my answer, the farther I go out this direction, is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And because it's the highest exponent piece, even if I had like a negative 10x to the fifth uh, as another term in there, because it has a higher exponent, this term is eventually going to dominate the output of the function. If we go far enough to the right, that value will overwhelm everything else that might be present in that polynomial function. And so for that reason, the graph is going to take off to positive infinity. So a way that we can write that is we can say it as x approaches positive infinity, meaning as we go farther and farther here to the right, as x gets to be a larger and larger number, then f of x is going to approach positive infinity, meaning the y values, the y coordinate, is going to grow larger and larger and larger. So that's one statement that we can make. For the other side, it's the same thing. If I plug in a larger and larger negative number for x, well, when I raise it to an even exponent, a negative raised to an even exponent is going to equal a positive. And then I multiply it by that positive coefficient, so I'm going to get the same circumstance. So as I go farther and farther to the left along the x-axis, I plug in bigger and bigger negatives, eventually that term of our polynomial function is going to dominate, and we're going to end up blowing up to positive infinity in the y direction. Or the other statement that we can make is, as x approaches negative infinity, meaning as we go farther and farther to the left, our outputs, f of x, are going to approach positive infinity. So no matter if we throw in bigger and bigger positives or bigger and bigger negatives for x, our function is going to grow to positive infinity in the y direction. So in the second scenario, we still have the highest exponent of our function is even. So we again could have it be f of x equals, let's say x to the fourth was our, our highest exponent this time. But now our leading coefficient, the coefficient in front of that highest exponent piece, is going to be a negative number. So let's say it was a negative 2. And again, we can have other terms in our function, but this is the highest exponent, and it has a negative as the leading coefficient. So in this case, if I plug in larger and larger positive values for x, I'm going to raise those positive values to an even exponent, so they're going to stay positive. But then I'm going to multiply them by a negative coefficient, which means that's going to send my graph eventually downwards. If I plug in a large enough number for x, it's going to overwhelm anything else that is happening in my function, and my graph is eventually going to take off to negative infinity. Or in similar fashion to what we see here and here, we can say as x approaches positive infinity, as we go farther and farther to the right, f of x approaches negative infinity, meaning the outputs of our function are becoming larger and larger negatives. Now let's go to the other side. As we go farther and farther to the left, as I plug in larger and larger negative numbers into this type of function. Well, Neg a negative raised to an even exponent is going to equal a positive. But then again, I'm going to multiply that positive result by that negative coefficient. And so therefore, we're going to get a negative output. So that's why my graph will eventually take off down to positive infinity. Or in the same style, as x approaches negative infinity, meaning as we plug in larger and larger negative values for x, then f of x, the outputs of our function, are going to approach negative infinity. So what we can see here is as long as our highest exponent is even, both sides of the graph are either going to take off and go up, or both sides of the graph are going to take off eventually and go down. They're both going to take off in the same direction, either both up or both down. So if you imagine, if you put both hands up above your head, side by side, we call these graphs a touchdown graph. And for the one where they're both going down, we just say it's an Australian rules uh, touchdown. So the idea is our graph is going to take off 
in the same direction, either both up or both down, as long as that highest exponent is even. And what determines whether it's going up or whether it's going down is whether the coefficient is positive or negative. So what happens if that highest exponent in the function is odd, like what we see in the next two scenarios? Well, so let's say we had f of x is, has an x cubed as the highest exponent. And in this first scenario, our leading coefficient is going to be a positive. So let's say that was a 5 in front. Now again, I don't care about everything else that's in the function because this is the part that's going to dominate, the highest exponent piece. So let's go through that same exercise. If I plug in a positive number in for x cubed, I'm going to get a positive number out. And then I'm going to multiply it by a positive coefficient. So that means as I go farther and farther here to the right, as I plug in bigger and bigger positive numbers, my outputs are going to get bigger and bigger. So I'm going to blow up to positive infinity. Or in other words, as x approaches positive infinity, f of x, the output of my function, is going to approach positive infinity. It's going to go up. But what happens if I plug in negative values for x? What if I plug in larger and larger negative values? Now, when I plug in a negative number in for x, I'm going to cube it, or raise it to the fifth power, whatever that odd highest exponent is, and I'm going to get a negative. But then I'm going to multiply that negative by a positive, so I'm going to stay negative. So that means the farther to the left I go, the bigger the negative I plug in, the farther down my graph is eventually going to take off to. Or, as x approaches negative infinity, we can say that f of x is going to approach negative infinity. So we can see that as we plug in positives, the graph is going to go up eventually. If we plug in negatives, the graph is going to go down eventually because it's just going to stay at the same positive negative sign because of the positive coefficient there. And then for the last here, let's suppose we've got n is still odd, so the highest exponent is odd, but now that leading coefficient is negative. So we have something like f of x equals negative 7 x to the fifth, and then again there could be anything coming after it. We're just going to focus on that highest exponent and its corresponding coefficient. So if I plug in positive numbers for x, I'm going to plug in a positive into x to the fifth, raise it to the fifth power, I get a positive, but then it gets hit by this negative coefficient. So the bigger the positive I plug in, eventually the bigger negative I get out. So as x approaches positive infinity, my outputs of my function f of x approach negative infinity. And then on the other side, if I plug in negative values for x, so as I plug in bigger and bigger negatives, I'm going to raise those negatives to the fifth power. That's going to give me a negative. But then I'm going to multiply those negatives by a negative coefficient, which is going to give me a positive. And so that's why if I go far enough to the left, in this case, my graph is going to go up. Or as x approaches negative infinity, f of x, my outputs, approach positive infinity. Or in the case, as a generalized statement, in the case of an odd highest exponent, one side's going to go up, one side's going to go down. So if you point with one hand pointing up towards the sky, and the other hand pointing down to the floor, that means that these odd highest exponent graphs will refer to as disco. So even highest exponent, touchdown, both sides are going to go up, both sides are going to go down, depending on whether the, high, the leading coefficient is positive or negative. And then in the case of an odd highest exponent, one side's up, one side's down. So we're going to refer to those as disco graphs. Again, which side is up and which side is down is going to depend on whether the leading coefficient is negative or positive. So this is how we can use the leading coefficient test to determine whether the graph is going to go up or down to positive infinity or negative infinity on the respective sides.